This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're joined by Eric Garner's daughter, Erica Garner. Uh, Eric Garner was taken down by police on July 17, 2014, put in a police uh, chokehold uh, in Staten Island. And as he said, I can't breathe, gasping it 11 times, the police piled on top of him. Uh, the reason we know what took place that day is because Ramsey Orta filmed Eric Garner's death film the attack on Eric Garner. He is also joining us here, a young man who simply had a video phone who was a friend of Eric's. Um, Erica, can you talk about your family and what has happened in the last 18 months? You know, a private family, kids, grandchildren, suddenly you're thrust into the international spotlight as a result of the death of your dad, Eric Garner. Well, um, when you deal with grief, when you talk about grief and you want to talk, and you talk about family and how fa regular families deal with it, you know, families have problems. Family has trouble to with coping with it, but it makes it so different because now we are part of this national scale. Like everything we do is in the paper. Um, we got people coming from the left field giving us bad advice. Um, people coming in with their own agendas, and it's like. We we are we are we was thrusting to the to the spotlight and was like out there. We don't have um, uh, union reps and people to represent us and tell us, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And um, you know, my family has just been dealing with that, trying to stay organized and also deal with the fact that my father is gone and like nothing is being done about it. And um, you know, mental health is 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 is. It's very important. Um, if you, you hear Bill de Blasio say, you know, it's very important and we need, you know, to do something about it. And it's like families that's put in my position, black families that's on public assistance that doesn't have the income, to get therapy is $300 an hour. And I don't think that's fair. And it's not made for the, for the white, po I mean, for the black population, because how are we supposed to cope with this if we don't have someone to talk to, someone professionally to talk to. So now my family is trying to figure out how, well, me personally, I'm trying to figure out how can I, you know, get past that barrier and find someone to talk to to deal with this, because this is trauma. This is my three-year-old three niece um, bashed a boy in the head with, a, with a, a book at school and said that I'm angry. The cops killed my grandfather. That's the reason why I did it. She wasn't mad at the kid, but it's, 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 she's so young. And for her to say that, it hurts my heart. And now she's in, you know, she got to talk to someone at her daycare or whatever, and it's just not fair. And we just need um, whatever put into place for ment mental health um, to take care of our, our mental health, because it's very important. It's very important, um, you know, dealing with grief. Um, I still haven't accepted that my father is gone, even though I talk about my dad, but I talk about him in a case study. Like, I've been studying this case. Um, for the latest updates, you can go to my website or to Twitter, officialericagardner.com or officialerica on Twitter. And, you know, you can see I'm constantly reading articles and doing the research on my dad's case, but I'm not taking care of me. And. That's what I want Ramsey Order to do. I want you to take care of you and, you know, what's what's going on, like, mentally and phys physically, but also to, like, other families that's going through this. Uh, Ramsey, you're wearing a sweatshirt that says Cop Watch. Uh, you're the person who uh, certainly watched um, and allowed the world to watch what happened to Eric Garner by filming. Explain what Cop Watch is and what are you doing with them? Cop Watch is an organization where we basically try to spread the knowledge and the rightful, um, the rightful, uh, how would I put that? The rightful words and let's just say if it was a religion, like people need to follow it because without this, is situations like Eric Garner would have been swept under the rug. So I, I, I feel like Cop Watch 
is there to, to make sure nothing else is being swept under the rug and we out there trying to hold cops accountable for their wrongdoing and not even hold cops accountable for their wrongdoing but also provide the community with more outlets and more structured uh, classes, I guess, to, to make sure everybody's on the same page. And What would you tell someone about filming? Um, don't be scared and just... Don't be scared. Now, since July 17, 2014, you've been held at Rikers two times. You were just in court yesterday. Uh, that case was adjourned. You're moving on to another one. You feel you're being targeted by police. You've been brought up on drug offenses. Um, so what would you tell someone else? Um, do you feel you've sacrificed a lot? Uh, yes. I mean, I've, 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 my whole personal life is out there. Um, to piggyback off of what Erica was saying, my little brother's only eight years old, and he goes to school crying because he's scared that I'm going to be rearrested. This is something that needs to be brought into the attention of the community where we out there living in these situations. The people that are getting this information and being taught about police accountability and or just even anything about the community, it's not being taught in the right places. It's being taught to people who have it already. One of the things I was most struck by in this video, the horrifying video that shows Eric Garner going down in a police chokehold, saying, I can't breathe 11 times, is that at a later point, um, bystanders, people near you, wanted to help him, because the police weren't. But the police kept any aid away. It's not only that they didn't administer to him or minister to him, they didn't let any of you, any of the people who were watching bystanders come and do first aid. Well, I mean, as far as that, from my knowledge, once there's a crime scene, us as in the community, we're not allowed to cross that line. So once they realized that they murdered my friend, that's when they started telling people to move back and stuff like that. Is there a federal civil rights investigation going on into the death of your father, Erica? Yes, but they're not giving up any information, not nothing. Um, also, I also want to bring to attention the three uh, EMS workers that recently been um, back to work. It's like a slap in the face. Explain what they did or didn't do. They didn't do anything. Um, according to witnesses at the scene, Sergeant Adonis, when she crept away in the video, she went to go speak to the EMS worker. I mean, the EMS trucks that stationed always on Staten Island, um, on Bay Street, on that particular block, when they wait for calls. Um, she went up to them, tried to ask for them to get assistance, according to Ed Mullins, the, the union rep. Um, and they didn't want to help them, so they called another EMS truck. And when they came to the scene, um, that's, that's the reason why four, four EMS workers was there. But um, Nicole Pomori, she's the only one that's still placed on modified duty. And that was the one that you could see in the video. Um, come over, sit, and, then come over and talk to him like he was alive. My father was already dead. And it hurts me to keep watching that, that video and they, they acting as if my father was alive. You, like, they treated his body so, like an animal, like a beast, like some, some, some dead animal that's, that's roadkill. And it's just, it's just everything just went wrong with them EMS workers and, you know, for them to get their they job back, it's like, it's like people are scared of the police, you know, and the brutality, but what about the EMS workers? Like, that's scary to call 911 and get an a request for an ambulance, the people that's supposed to save your life, and they come and they don't do anything. My father could have been saved by oxygen, CPR, any, any action, and that's another thing when I say about the corruption, like, the corruption and injustice need to stop. They need to stop f pointing fingers and blaming this one and blaming that one and admit gu guilt to everything that they that happened on that um, corner. Um, yeah, I just want to 
if it goes back to my point, if Sergeant Adonis um, is charged with failure to supervise, then a lot of people from the bottom all the way to the top should be charged with the same thing. And again, I just want to strongly um, stress that Bill de Blasio, William Bratton, just like um, people are, um, the Chicago Mill, uh, Raham, um, they, they Rahm Emanuel. Rahm, they telling him that he should need he needs to resign over the death of Laquan McDonald. Yes, and I think that people of New York need to stand up and demand that Bratton and Bill De Blasio resign also. And you know, just take a look back of like um, the police officers turning their back on their commander in chief William Bratton after they told him not to, and also the mayor. So. The police is not even respecting your position, your high ranking. So, you know, it's just not, it's just not uh, acceptable. Whatever you know, answers we got so far. And Ramsey, what are your final thoughts that you'd like to leave our listeners and viewers with? First and foremost, I would like to thank you guys and Erica for bringing me here, and um, my supporters out there that strongly and highly stick by my side and don't go nowhere. Besides all the bad stuff that's been said about me, they still support me. And that's what just makes me get up stronger and do what I got to do every day. Well, I want to thank you both, Ramsey Orta and Erica Garner, for joining us. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman.